Glamour model and business owner Brittany Rea Phillips, aged 26, was run over on November the 21st of 2020 by her ex-boyfriend, James Heath Kitchens. The incident, which took place in Starkville, Mississippi, was described by local law enforcement as one of domestic violence, but further details weren't immediately provided. A friend of Phillips's reported that Kitchens, a former police officer for the city of Tupelo in Lee County, was abusive towards her and that their relationship had fallen apart. He was a father to Phillips's youngest child, and it was speculated that he'd refused to accept that she wanted to move on. Law enforcement arrived at the scene on Riviera Road and found that Phillips had been struck by a vehicle driven by 30-year-old Kitchens. The model was taken to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. Kitchens was charged with manslaughter and released on a $25,000 bond. Number 6. Shana Grice British teenager Shana Grice met Michael Lane, who was eight years her senior in 2015 when they both worked at Brighton Fire Alarms. They became a couple but eventually broke up and Grice got back together with her previous boyfriend. By then, however, Lane had become obsessed with her and confided in a friend that Grice would pay for what she's done. On August the 25th of 2016, Lane waited until Grice was alone at her home in Portslade, East Sussex. He made his way inside, cut the 19-year-old's throat and set her bedroom on fire with her in it. Lane was arrested that day and initially lied to the police about his whereabouts at the time of the murder before admitting that he'd been to Grice's home. He claimed to have found her already dead and that he hadn't alerted anyone for fear of being considered the killer. His trial in the spring of 2017 only lasted a few weeks before he was found guilty and sentenced to life with a minimum of 25 years served. The case would earn a great deal of attention, particularly due to the repeated failings of Sussex police in addressing the extensive harassment to which Lane had subjected the victim. From the time that they'd broken up and leading to the murder, there had been multiple instances of increasingly more threatening behavior from Lane. It placed a tracker on Grice's car and caused damage to the vehicle. Grice alerted the police in February and again in March after Lane had grabbed her by the hair and snatched her phone. The man was arrested on suspicion of assault but eventually released while Grice was fined for wasting the police's time by not disclosing they'd been in a relationship. Other incidents followed that included Lane stalking her, entering her home with a stolen key to watch the teenager as she slept, or repeatedly calling her from blocked numbers. The police ultimately deemed the case low risk, even though Lane had similarly harassed at least a dozen girls and women from 2006 to 2016. On August the 4th of 2016, Grice and a friend saw him loitering outside her home. By then, however, she'd become so disillusioned with the police's response that she was afraid they would react in disbelief and find her again. Even with a friend as a witness, she didn't alert the authorities. Within weeks, she would be dead. Number 5. Megan Jacquis Florida woman Megan Jacquis, a former child protective investigator trainee with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, was arrested on multiple charges in 2019, which stemmed from a campaign of harassment she'd led against her ex-boyfriend. Over the course of a year, 25-year-old Jack Quiss had sent the man hundreds of texts, disguised her number to call him relentlessly, and accessed online accounts in his name. With the sole intention of harassing him, she used his personal information to file for a job application with a plumbing company in August, and also filed false complaints with law enforcement claiming he'd been responsible for noise violations and acts of animal cruelty. Jaquis was arrested on charges that included stalking as well as harassment by use of personal identification and accessing a computer or electronic device without authority. Number 4. Najinsky Latasia Dix After dating for about three months, 37-year-old Najinsky Latasia Dix and Terry Hickman aged 44, broke up in May of 2020. NBC Chicago reported that one person familiar with the couple claimed that Dix began stalking Hickman in the aftermath. At the time, Dix was a gender studies PhD candidate at the University of Illinois and an employee at the University of Notre Dame. Approximately six months after her relationship with Hickman had ended, she tracked him down to his home in Washington, D.C. On the evening of November the 14th, Local police responded to reports of shots fired at the man's residence. Officers found Hickman 
suffering from gunshot wounds on the floor of his apartment and Dix talking on the phone to her mother saying, he pushed me and I shot him. Witnesses told law enforcement that they seen the former couple in the parking lot prior to the shooting. They then heard a woman screaming for help after multiple gunshots had rung out and saw Dix pacing on the balcony. Hickman passed away from his injuries. Dix was taken to a hospital where she told staff that she was experiencing memory loss. Doctors found an abrasion on the inside of her left lower lip but couldn't determine the cause and told investigators that the woman didn't appear to have been physically assaulted. While she was questioned at the station, Dix asked detectives to show her items that might unblock her memory. Upon being handed a photo of Hickman, she started crying and repeatedly asked for it to be taken away from her saying, you don't do people you love like that, that's not love. She was charged with second degree murder and her case was ongoing according to updates on the matter. Hey, it's Carl. Be sure to subscribe and leave your comments in the comments section below and maybe, just maybe, we'll get your video going next. Number three, Michelle Felton. Michelle Felton and Ryan Harley from Cheshire, England, had dated from May of 2020 until February of 2022, when their relationship broke down following a physical altercation. Felton kicked Harley in the groin and he accidentally broke her finger in the scrap, but no criminal charges were filed. About 12 days later, Harley ended the relationship, but 28-year-old Felton didn't accept the decision and subsequently bombarded him with texts and calls. In some of them, the woman asked if they were still going out and when they'd meet. When Harley didn't reply, she accused him of cheating on his driver's test. The man repeatedly told her to stop contacting him and that he didn't want to resume their relationship, but Felton wouldn't desist. Harley, who reportedly suffered from anxiety and depression, experienced a great deal of distress from the harassment. It lasted from February the 15th to the 26th, and the woman would call or send him messages up to 150 times on a daily basis. Harley ultimately alerted law enforcement after Felton had begun leaving gifts on his doorstep. He told officers, I just wanted to go away and for it all to stop. Felton admitted harassment at Warrington Magistrates Court in January of 2023. She was banned from contacting Harley for 18 months and sentenced to an 18-month community order with a requirement she participated in 30 days of rehabilitative activities. Number 2. Ramon Molina In the spring of 2022, a Florida man was arrested twice by deputies from the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office for harassing his ex-girlfriend. For about two weeks leading up to April the 26th, the unnamed woman in question had blocked all communication with her ex, 21-year-old Ramon Molina. She'd previously told the man that she wanted to move on from the relationship, but he messaged and called her obsessively, even at her workplace. He then went to her home, unannounced, and made his way inside through a back door. The victim locked herself in the bathroom and shouted at him to leave her alone. As she later told the authorities, she'd heard Molina through the door threatening to take away her therapy dog, but he eventually left the residence. He was arrested on stalking charges after midnight on April the 27th and released later in the day after being handed a no-contact order. Molina was taken into custody again on May the 12th for violating the order when his ex-girlfriend alerted law enforcement that he'd called her from an unknown number. The calls were confirmed by an Instagram conversation between Molina and a third party in which the former admitted that he'd contacted his ex, describing the move as a mistake and adding that he wouldn't do it again. Think you'll be craving more true crime after number one? Well, stay tuned if you'd like to watch our previous release on When Exploiters Go Wrong. Number 1. Adam Cobb In the spring of 2022, Jamie Joyner was in the process of moving out of the house she shared with Adam Cobb, with whom she'd recently broken up after a relationship lasting several years. Jamie's older sister, Jessica Joyner Escott, flew to Illinois from California to help her and they rented a U-Haul. They drove the vehicle to the property in rural Collinsville to pick up Jamie's belongings and her pet bull. Jada. 30-year-old Jamie had moved from Missouri to the Metro East to be with Cobb a few years prior. By multiple accounts, Cobb had a temper, and in 2018, a woman had filed for a protection order against him. Following a business dispute, he'd reportedly harassed her family in a manner that included taking pictures 
of her teenage daughter. In the later stages of his relationship with Jamie, whenever she talked about leaving, Cobb would get angry and threaten to hurt her or take away her dog. His obsessive and controlling behavior reached a boiling point on the morning of April the 2nd of 2022, when Jamie and Jessica made the drive to Collinsville. At around 10.30 a.m., a 911 call was placed in which a woman was heard screaming, followed by the sound of gunshots. Responding officers found both sisters and Jada shot dead on the property, while the U-Haul was still parked in the driveway. Based on the proximity of a cell phone to Jamie's body, law enforcement determined that she'd made the call. 32-year-old Cobb became the main suspect in the killings. He'd fled the scene and later that same day engaged the police in a car chase through central Illinois. As shown in body cam footage, subsequently released by the authorities, he eventually stopped his partially disabled pickup truck on US Route 51 north of Panna. Cobb exited the vehicle and pointed a handgun at state troopers, at which point he was shot. He was taken to a regional hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. Number 7. Christina Pongrax A 29-year-old woman by the name of Christina Pongrax was brought to trial over the death of her elderly boyfriend, William Herchenrider, in 2010. 77-year-old Herchen Ryder, a wealthy man from Good, Virginia, was found badly beaten in his home on May the 4th. After being hospitalized for several months, Herchen Ryder ultimately passed away from his injuries in August. Following an autopsy, his death was ruled a homicide, and his girlfriend, nearly five decades his junior, was determined to have been the perpetrator. Pongratz had reportedly grown angry at Herchen Ryder after he'd expressed his intention of ending their relationship and kicking her out of his Bedford County mansion. Pongratz proceeded to attack him with his own walking stick, inflicting the severe injuries that would eventually lead to his demise. She was arrested a day after Herchen Ryder had been brought to the hospital and initially charged with aggravated malicious wounding. However, following the victim's death, Prosecutors decided to pursue a first-degree murder charge against Pongratz. Her fate was determined in February of 2012 when she was sentenced to 15 years in prison for the brutal beating of her boyfriend. Herchen Ryder had sparked up an intimate relationship with the young woman roughly a decade prior to the incident when she was just 18 years old. Number 6. Paul Gonzalez 45-year-old Paul Gonzalez of Los Angeles, California scammed at least 20 women into paying for exorbitantly priced gourmet meals in a series of dine and dash incidents that subsequently became infamous. Gonzalez was out of work and with no income on which to rely, he formulated a criminal plot centered on manipulating women into paying for his food. The scheme was fairly straightforward in structure as Gonzalez would go on various online dating sites to court his victims. He invited them out on lavish dates to some of Los Angeles's most popular high-end eateries, restaurants like Tam O'Shantner and Smitty's Grill. After ordering excessive amounts of food, Gonzalez would come up with an excuse to leave the table, often telling his dates that he had to make an important phone call. He would then take off without paying for the expensive meals he'd ordered, leaving his unsuspecting victims to pick up the check. Gonzalez later became known as the Dine and Dash Data after a woman named Marjorie Moon posted about her experiences with the scammer on Facebook. She said that Gonzalez had ordered $250 worth of food and drinks on their date before leaving her, a single mother of five children, to pay for it all. Her post went viral and she was invited onto radio and television programs to expand on her story. This helped lead to the discovery of 20 women in total who came forward with dates, the course of which had been very similar to Moon's. Gonzalez was eventually charged with seven counts of extortion, two counts of attempted extortion, and one count of grand theft. Although he faced a maximum penalty of 13 years in prison, he was ultimately sentenced to 120 days behind bars. Number 5. Lydia Abdel Malik Serial catfisher Lydia Abdel Malik of Melbourne, Australia, was found guilty of six counts of stalking, which put her behind bars for two years and eight months. One of the victims she'd preyed upon was a 29-year-old woman who later took her own life due to the mental anguish Abdel Malik caused her. The victim, identified simply as Emma, had first gotten into contact with Abdel Malik back in 2011. The stalker posed as well-known Australian actor Lincoln Lewis in their online interactions. Emma was a childhood friend of Lewis's, but she hadn't spoken with him in many years. She was soon manipulated into thinking that she'd begun an online dating relationship with him. Emma sent revealing photographs to the person she believed to be Lincoln Lewis, 
and regularly engaged in explicit conversations with them over text. After a few months, Emma became suspicious that the Facebook account she thought belonged to Lewis might actually be a fake, as the actor had been consistently cancelling their plans to meet up at the very last minute. She managed to get in touch with the real Lewis, who claimed to have no knowledge of their purported relationship. Abdel Malik continued to stalk Emma through the dummy account she had created. Even after her ruse was found out, she sent threatening messages and even disseminated the lurid pictures Emma had sent her to people she knew. The woman took her own life in 2018 after years of torment at the hands of the cruel catfisher. Abdel Malik used phony internet personas and fake social media accounts to stalk as well as mentally and emotionally abuse a total of six individuals. Prosecutors claimed she carried out her deceptions in pursuit of some sort of twisted pleasure that she received from their suffering. She appealed her convictions and sought to have her charges set aside by the County Court of Victoria. Number 4. Titus Clarice After skipping out on around 100 restaurant bills and earning a reputation as Belgium's most prolific dine and dasher, 35-year-old Titus Clarice was found dead in January of 2014, having been repeatedly stabbed inside his apartment. Residents of the medieval university town of Ghent had long known of Clarice's devious exploits and despite the illegality of his actions, he had become somewhat of a mini-celebrity within his community. He was a man of humble means who was said to have lived off government aid for much of his adult life. His welfare checks amounted to less than $50 a week, but Clarice still insisted on dining at some of Ghent's most expensive establishments. After gorging himself on extravagant meals for which Clarice knew he hadn't the money to pay, he would simply inform the restaurant of his inability to cover the bill. Sometimes he would be allowed to walk away consequence-free, but he also spent a number of nights in jail due to his brazen and compulsive dine and dash antics. He claimed not to mind the nights behind bars, insisting the hearty meals he'd enjoyed were well worth the punishment. In 2009, Clarice was fined approximately $2,000 and sentenced to six months of house arrest for his behavior. Even so, he continued his rampant freeloading until the day he died. Authorities struggled to establish a suspect in his killing, though some have speculated that Clarice was murdered by a maligned restaurant owner still harboring a grudge over an unpaid bill. Number 3. Charles Bisucci In August of 2017, a wealthy woman named Marilyn Burden, aged 70, was murdered by her 69-year-old partner, Charles Bisucci. He made little effort to hide the fact that he was an exploiter and openly referred to Burden as his superannuation, a financial term that describes regular payments made to a person's pension fund. The couple had lived together in Burden's East Melbourne mansion since 2011. Their relationship had continued despite the fact that Bisucci was romantically involved with another woman. Burden had gradually grown weary of her boyfriend relying on her for support. After decades of financial mismanagement and fraud, Bisucci found himself without a cent to his name in the months leading up to the killing of his girlfriend. She had kicked him out of her luxury Q home and cut him off from her money as well. Bisucci's firearms license had been suspended in 2004 after violence with a previous partner had led to him being declared a prohibited person. However, he successfully subverted the laws and regulations, keeping him from acquiring a weapon by forging permit applications and illegally obtaining a total of 16 firearms between 2004 and 2017. He used one of these illicit guns to carry out the killing of Marilyn Burden. He shot her inside her Melbourne home before turning the gun on himself. Number 2. Carol Richardson 47-year-old Carol Richardson was arrested by Houston police in September of 2020 after it was discovered that he'd been illegally housing more than 30 elderly and disabled individuals in a dilapidated nursing home. Officers who arrived at the scene described the conditions of the home as deplorable, as cockroaches had infested the building while Richardson had neglected to provide adequate food and medication for the ailing people residing at his unlicensed group home. It wasn't the first time Richardson had been found unlawfully operating a home for individuals in need of care. In fact, at the time of that particular incident, Richardson was out on bond from a separate case in which he was accused of assaulting a disabled person who lived in one of his decrepit group houses. It's been reported that the man was running a total of seven homes for the elderly and disabled. He regularly used residences' debit cards for cash withdrawals or, in one instance, to purchase $1,000 worth of supplies for his church. 
even though he was only authorized to use the cards for his residence monthly rent charges. In July of 2021, Richardson was granted five felony bonds and was released from jail. Just a month later, however, he was charged with two more felonies for injuring an elderly or disabled individual once again. Subsequent updates on the case indicated that the authorities were still attempting to locate Richardson, who had been on the run since his release. Number 1. Christina Ott Utah woman Christina Ott, a Leighton native, fell victim to a pernicious romance scam that turned her into a criminal's unwitting money mule. In September of 2020, Ott had taken to online dating platforms to try and find a partner in the aftermath of her recent divorce. The retired woman was in an arguably vulnerable state of mind when she was first targeted by an individual looking to use her to discreetly launder money. Her internet suitor appeared to be someone searching for love and was seemingly on the same wavelength as her. However, as their relationship progressed, it soon became far more financial in nature. The pair came up with a plan to open up a restaurant in Salt Lake City. At that point, Ott's boyfriend began asking her to deposit large amounts of money into her bank account, claiming that the cash was flowing in from investors in their business. She would then transfer the money back to him, ostensibly to pay for various expenses relating to the construction of their restaurant. Ott claimed to have moved a total of roughly $1 million through her account over the course of their online relationship. When the man she believed to be her boyfriend continually refused to meet her in person, she began to grow suspicious. Ott cut off communication with him, stopped transferring his money, and filed a report with the Leighton Police Department. Five months later, Ott went to visit her nephew at a military base, but in order to be allowed on the premises, she had to undergo a background check. After being asked to wait for over an hour while the verification process was being completed, Ott was arrested in front of her grandchildren. Reportedly, there was a warrant out for her arrest in Powell County, Kentucky. She was on the receiving end of a Class C felony charge, relating to the financial misdeeds she had unknowingly helped facilitate for her boyfriend. Prosecutors offered her a plea deal that dropped the felony charges and instead required her to pay a $5,000 fine. Thanks for watching. For a year, would you rather eat only one type of food or listen to the same album? Let us know in the comments section below.